Hello and welcome. This is Rufal Monger, my friends. In today's video, we're going to talk about a topic that has been debated many, many times over the years in that what is real Street Fighter? And what does that even mean, right? What is real Street Fighter? Well, real Street Fighter almost opposes the existence of a fake Street Fighter, right? And well, sometimes that's the argument. The debate of what is real Street Fighter is what is the soul of Street Fighter? What is Street Fighter supposed to be about? What does Street Fighter embody as a series? Every time we find the new villain of the week for the thing to complain about, right? It always comes up, well, this isn't real Street Fighter. Implying whatever it may be, it could be a character, it could be a setup, it could be a technique, is basically immoral and wrong by pure Street Fighter standards. And what's pure Street Fighter exactly? You know, is it some ideal? Is it a relic of a bygone age we don't have anymore? And kind of more to the point, did real Street Fighter, quote unquote, ever exist to begin with? So here, let me give you an example of what I would say is real Street Fighter, at least to me on paper. To me, real Street Fighter is crouch medium kick into fireball. The most fundamental building block of what we call footsies, neutral, all that. That's real Street Fighter to me. To that point, my favorite match of all Street Fighter history ever is Street Fighter 4, specifically Super Street Fighter 4. SoCal Regionals 2010, Alex Valle versus Daigo, Ryu versus Ryu. To me, this is everything Street Fighter encompasses. It's Ryu versus Ryu. There's no gimmicks, there's no flashiness, there's no neutral skipping. It is two players just playing super fundamentally sound with proper spacing, proper footsies, hell of a lot of projectiles. This is to me what Street Fighter is at its core. And of course the super honest, super fundamentals, neutral based matchup exists in every variation of Street Fighter, right? And I think on some level, this is what most people one way or another think what real quote unquote Street Fighter is, right? Something, something neutral, something, something spacing, something, something footsies. That's Street Fighter. And there's lots of great examples over the years of this, right? And then somewhere, at least as a community, around the Street Fighter V era specifically, right? We started saying Street Fighter V isn't real Street Fighter. Because what you're seeing here, you know, became somewhat less prevalent, especially, say, earlier on in that game's life. Instead of Crouch Medium Kick Fireball, we had Crouch Medium Kick V Trigger into something into Super and you lost half your life, right? And this has been heavily nerfed over the years, but still, it was there. And, you know, a lot of people decried this isn't real Street Fighter. Where's the honorable neutral footsies and poking, right? But the thing is, real Street Fighter, as we remember, you know, the bygone Halcyon days, all that kind of stuff, it didn't really ever exist. Like, yes, we have characters that like neutral footsies more, you know, quote unquote proper Street Fighter, all that, right? But, you know, at the higher levels of play in just about any damn game you can think of, Street Fighter is a greasy, dirty game. This honorable samurai duel that we think real Street Fighter is never really existed to begin with. It happens every now and then, sure, yes, but it was never the law of the land. And complaining that real Street Fighter is no longer a thing happened long before Street Fighter V. So let's showcase some examples here. Like, let's go back to Street Fighter II, right? The granddaddy. The game where, you know, it started all this game where it's most honest and fair. And let's look at a strong character in this game, like Vega. Vega is a very strong exemplar of real Street Fighter, right? Grid walk speed, good pokes. Like, if you just want to do back and forth and poke and hit buttons and all that, He's really good at it, so he's good at quote unquote real Street Fighter. But Vega is messed up in a way that will never be allowed ever again. And this was all the way back then when things were, you know, proper, you know, back when the game was real. But here's the thing, Vega is messed up in a way that would never ever be allowed in a modern game. As much as you might complain about throw loops or whatever in Street Fighter 6, this guy has it all beat, and this is all the way back in the, the good days when everything was prim and proper, right? So Vega has wall dive. You probably know about wall dive, right? It's always been a classic. A uh, wall dive is a terror in this game. To the point where, like, say Street Fighter 4 Vega, Street Fighter 5 Vega, you all these people argue Vega is never allowed to be good because it's crimes in Street Fighter 2. So why is that, right? Well, Vega has wall dive attack. And the thing about wall dive attack is Vega has extreme mobility and 
just air control and also choosing which side he wants to hit you on. Do the point, you score any kind of knockdown and now it's time to start guessing for your life because he can just keep doing it over and over and it's very literally impossible to guess. Like you cannot react in time to block the right way. You just have to guess right. And Vega can loop it until you die and you'll die only in a couple wrong guesses. And if you do block correctly, he's insanely advantage on block. And then when he's pressuring him, once again, he's got those good buttons. He's got one of the best throws in the game to the point as well, where if you can correctly guess with a reversal and it's much harder to do a reversal in this game compared to, you know, more modern games, you can just land and block. Like he doesn't have to commit to anything. So <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Also, if you happen to be committed to blocking, he has an air throw as well. So like you have to guess left, right, or maybe he's going to throw you. Who knows what it's going to be. And also his super is his throw. And the super only burns the meter if he actually gets the super off. If he doesn't get the throw, the meter's still there. And also, he has some of the best meter building in the game. Like, you can just backflip over and over with no, like, no consequence. But it's an incredible mix-up. If you get knocked down once, it could very literally be game right there for multiple reasons. And on top of that, then, you know, he has, like, good back-forth neutral. So, yeah, even way back in the day, it was messed up. And that's just Vega. How about something universal, right? Like throws. You know, famously, we all complained about throws back in the 90s, right? That was just how it is. Uh, but say you hate throw loops or whatever now in Street Fighter 6. Yo, if you're younger and you don't know, there's no such thing as teching throws in Street Fighter 2. You can't do it. We have what we call throw softening. So you notice here Chun-Li, she's recovering in the air. She doesn't take quite as much damage. Uh, and let me tell you as a career Bison player, right? i rather you do this. This is worse for you in a lot of ways, right? Because what you're doing here when you soften the throw is you recover in the air and uh, Bison with his incredibly fast walk speed, I'm literally on top of you immediately. Now you do this and then I'm immediately on top of you. Like right here, done. They just kind of have to sit and block and if you just sit and block, I'm just going to throw you again. So it's like a throw loop almost like mid screen. And quite a few characters have the kind of throw where you can't even soften the throw. You are taking the throw no matter what. And it's uh, kind of like a bit of a mash war. And the more you mash buttons, you kind of go from there, right? Uh, and the thing is, these kind of throws are super deadly because like, I can walk underneath you while you're in your recovery. So if you get grabbed at all, I can immediately just go like, oh, cross up, cross under rather. Or hey, maybe this time I'll look like I'm going to go for a cross under. I'll stay same side. Who? How about it? You know, like who knows what's going to happen? Uh, <laughs> and that's mid screen anywhere. And there's no escape. Like, if you get grabbed, like, this is happening. And also, while doing this, uh, regardless of how you're going about it, like, it easily just kind of loops into itself over and over and over. Uh, there's also a lot of weirdness with, like, throw ranges and how characters throw each other, because each throw range is dependent character by character, and a lot of characters really struggle against this. How about a game like Street Fighter Alpha 2 moving on, right? Street Fighter Alpha 2 had custom combos where you could enter a mode and basically everything would kind of chain into everything, right? And that's kind of cool, right? That's very anime, very stylish, and nothing inherently wrong in and of itself, except, you know, this is well before the age of the internet. You know, games didn't get patches. You maybe sometimes got a board revision or otherwise you just waited for the next game. If you didn't like something, you waited for the next game. That's kind of how it was done. And fun little fact about custom combos. If you entered the state of custom combos, and then, if you know, if you're near the enemy, you know, say crouch medium kick distance. We love that crouch medium kick, right? That became unblockable. You couldn't block low if you were already standing when the custom combo got activated. So if I activate it in front of your face, went low and you weren't already blocking, that's unblockable. Straight up. And you just had to like it. It was definitely a part of the game's competitive life. In fact, we call that the VIA CC, VIA Custom Combos. Uh, so, yo, that's kind of not fair. That's not real, Street Fighter. Street Fighter Alpha 3, we had this thing called V-ism, which was sort of the uh, evolution of the custom combo, I guess you could say, in Street Fighter Alpha 2. And... <laughs> So, uh, you know, we're in the era of the 90s where combos were everything, right? You know, killer instincts out, all that kind of stuff. Everyone loves combos. And, well, v 
B-ism let you do a lot of weird things because your clone would just kind of follow up with whatever you're doing, right? And also relax the juggle and combo rules of the game, allowing for just all sorts of absolutely messed up stuff. Also, you started with full meter in this game, right? Like you didn't build up to it, you just started with it. So you could do this stuff at the start of a round if you got a clean hit in. And out of the fact, there's all sorts of like semi-practical infinites as well. Like this game is stupid in a lot of ways. It's a fun game, but stupid in a lot of ways. Not real Street Fighter. Now, Street Fighter 3 was another big problem, although not specifically for gameplay out of the gate anyways. Uh, when it comes to like real Street Fighter, where the hell are the characters? Like, you know, nowadays people talk about Street Fighter 3 in, you know, very glowing terms as a franchise. But during the time, it was kind of reviled. Uh, one, not the least of which, the characters, right? Other than Ryu and Ken, where is everybody? Where is Chun-Li? She wasn't in the game till Third Strike. Where is, you know, Sagat? Where is Honda? Where is Dalsam? Where is Blanca? Where is Guile? Where are all of our favorite characters? Nowhere to be found. And uh, a lot of people just out of the gate. This is not real Street Fighter. Later versions would add more characters, at least we get Akuma, we get Chun-Li, right? But still, nobody wanted Remy over Guile, right? And then there's the whole issues of Parry's. Uh, Parry is a highlight of the game today, right? Absolutely. It's one of the big skill windows of the game. Uh, you know, maybe there's some silly stuff with it, like Parry OS, whatever, right? Uh, but it's certainly considered a positive these days. Back in the day, this was not real Street Fighter. What do you mean? I'm Ryu and I throw my fireball and you can just parry it. You don't take chip damage. You don't got to risk a jump that I can dragon punch. And on top of just parrying my full screen fireball, you also gain meter for doing it. And it's uh, basically trivial to do, right? This is not real Street Fighter. Like, sounds funny now, right? But if you were there at the time, this was a major concern, right? The fact that like the projectile game as you knew it back in the day was uh, mostly trivialized in this game. Lots of people hated that, and lots of people avoided the game because of it. Now, let's move to something like Street Fighter 4, right? For a lot of the old timers, myself included, Street Fighter 4 was a return to form. This is real Street Fighter again. And Lord knows Street Fighter 4 had its problems over the years, right? But let me give you one that was just, it became the game. It became accepted, it became how it was. I'm going to pick my boy T-Hawk to showcase this. T-Hawk, without a shadow of a doubt, is considered one of the worst characters in this game. Always has been. And yet, I'm going to show you something, if you don't know it exists, is, well, messed up and unfair. So T-Hawk gets grab Oki. Like, he does like grab. You're right beside him. And then he can, like, kind of try to mix you up a little bit, right? So as you can see here, I go for jump splash. This is the cross-up move, the grappler splash. And it hits the same side. So, okay, whatever. So you can see my inputs now, and after that grab, okay, holding back the block. Sure, because it hits the same side, you hold back the block. What? Okay, let's try that one more time. Hold back the block. Huh, okay. Maybe it's a cross-up now. Let me uh, block cross-up. No? What? I'm blocking cross-up, it hit before, so what's going on here? So I can't hold back the block, and I can't hold forward the block. Why? Because this is a true blue unblockable. If I do this right as T-Hawk, you're simply boned. There is no way out. You have to take the hit. And this is just T-Hawk, right? You'd think this technique would be stronger on a character that's better than T-Hawk. Well, guess what? All sorts of characters have this kind of stuff on blockables, and it's considered normal in competitive play later on in the game's life. You get knocked down, and you get thrown into the blender, and there's literally no way out. In Ultra Street Fighter 4, they added a feature called the uh, technical delayed wake up, right? Which is common now in uh, other fighting games. Uh, simply to get around this, because they literally didn't know how to fix the problem. <laughs> they literally just gave up. So they added delay wake up to the game. So a lot of these like mathematically perfect setups, like the one you're watching, that can beat you know, either block either way, given guaranteed combos. Uh, you could at least delay wake up so... At least you wouldn't get hit by the initial hit. There could be other problems, right? But yeah, certainly I do a thing and I get a guaranteed combo on you no matter what, just off a simple knockdown. Well, that's not real Street Fighter now, is it? But then again, if we go back to Street Fighter 2, I showed you that Vega example, right? This is more real Street Fighter like Vega back in the day where 
I knock you down and it's kind of might be game right from there, right? So who's to say what real Street Fighter is? Then come the era of Street Fighter V, man, pick up season. It's got its own BS, right? Uh, usually involving V-Trigger in some form. But yeah, this is the era where we started really having those conversations of what is real Street Fighter. And of course, it just started getting, you know, the flavors of it, right? Not just what is real Street Fighter, what is not real Street Fighter, but pick a character, pick a meta, pick a matchup, whatever. And people will find their reasons to decry whatever it may be is not real Street Fighter. And as far as Street Fighter 6 goes, well, we know where we're at with Street Fighter 6. Let's put it that way, right? Street Fighter 6 is Street Fighter 6. So we all got an idea of our head of what is real Street Fighter, and yet you go over all the games, all history of Street Fighter, no Street Fighter is real Street Fighter. Every Street Fighter has just complete BS garbage that is antithetical to our, you know, beautiful memory of what Street Fighter should be. For many people, whatever the Street Fighter you started with is real Street Fighter. You let the nostalgia take over, and then, you know, anything past what is your Street Fighter is stupid garbage. It's not real. New game bad, old game was better. And a lot of times that's sort of what it boils down to, right? But there still is just the idea of real Street Fighter, right? So real Street Fighter can be multiple things. Because the idea of, you know, the heavy, neutral, grounded Street Fighter that we all love to think about... It does exist, right? Sometimes it's just a character dependent matchup. It certainly isn't the law, especially in modern Street Fighter, but it still does exist, right? And modern Street Fighter, especially sometimes crazy garbage is part of Street Fighter and that's just how it is, right? So real Street Fighter can both be an honorable, neutral footsies based battle. And it also can be a 50, 50 nonsense mess where you get knocked down once and it could be game over because you might get throw loop to death or mixed to death. Turns out real Street Fighter can be a lot of different things. Kind of beautiful in that way, right? It won't stop future arguments, right? Uh, especially because, you know, people will be all over the map. They'll decry the return for, you know, the more neutral based game. And yet they'll pick the most degenerate rush down 50-50 characters they can find. And that's fine because real Street Fighter should have options for everybody. So it's just something I want to talk about just because this argument always pops up like every three or four months. Uh, you can set your clock to it almost, right? And the thing is this, you know, perfect game that we all talk about where it was just about, you know, true skill and there was no easy mode stuff. Like, it's always been there since the start. There's always been greasy, grimy stuff. There's always been the out and out unfair stuff. In Street Fighter Six, as it stands currently, M. Bison can kill you in two hits. Rashid's level two is absolutely jacked up and unfair. And even if that changes... We'll find something else to complain about because that's just how it works. We always need a villain and that's the beauty of real Street Fighter, right? We can look at today's villain and think to ourselves it was better back then, even though it never really was. And that's my thoughts on the matter. My friends, that is the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well and go out and play some Street Fighter.